So Jesus, Yeshua, steps on the scene. He enters into Galilee before he calls his disciples and he says the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. So we have to ask us some questions. He says the time is being fulfilled. What time is being fulfilled? What, what is it that's being fulfilled? The kingdom of God is at hand. What kingdom? You got to think the Jewish nation, they've been waiting for the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, to come and overthrow the Roman occupancy in, in Israel. And then he says, repent and believe the gospel. What is it to repent and what is the gospel? He was saying that way before he went to the cross. You, you see, he stepped in Galilee and before he starts his earthly ministry, before he calls his disciples. And he says, the time is being fulfilled. What is the time? The time of the law, the, the prophets, everything that, the, that was written about him in the old scriptures, in the Old Testament, you know what I mean? He says, the kingdom of God is at hand. See, the Jewish nation was right, waiting for the Messiah to come. They, they thought he was gonna be some great military leader to overthrow the, the, the Roman occupancy in, in Israel and establish a new kingdom. They didn't understand the spiritual aspect of it. It was a spiritual kingdom. King Jesus was establishing a spiritual kingdom on, on earth, you know what I mean? As it is in heaven, you know? And then he says, repent and believe the gospel. So what is it to repent? Turn from our wicked ways, right? And believe, not just believe in our mind and all that believism and pretend and make believe things, no. And the real true belief, true faith, causes action it causes works man i don't care what you say i don't care no it's not what saves us get off that topic that's milk man we're talking about fulfilling the gospel fulfilling the law every time we we walk in, in christ and we walk out our salvation we work it out with fear and trembling we're fulfilling the law of christ man when, when we take care of each other and in heavenly places because you're standing here the laws of gravity don't matter here. Oh, oh. Pray for each other and endure each other's burdens. That's fulfilling the law of Christ. You know what I mean? Like, so repent and believe the gospel. And the gospel, is, is, he was saying that way before he was on the cross dying for our sins. Way before Mark even wrote his gospel, man, he was saying, repent and believe the gospel. The good news, right? But I, I believe it's more than um, some type of message or teaching. It's, it's a lifestyle, walking and living in the spirit. We must, we must ask the spirit to discern, to discern things and give us judgment and understanding. You know what I mean? Hey, Google, you version Bible. Welcome to YouVersion Bible. What would you like to hear? Mark 1, 15. Mark 1, verse 15. And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Welcome to the sheepfold, where we all know the voice of our shepherd. So let's get biblical. Let me set the time period for you. Okay, let me, let's talk about two main uh, historical events that happened in world history. Whether you believe it, you serve him or not, no matter what you want to believe, it's a fact. Jesus Christ's birth changed the time period. No matter what you want to believe, you can call it BCE, before Common Era and, be, and Common Era, or before Christ and Anno Dynamis. It's a Latin phrase meaning in the year of the Lord. Either way, you, you, either way, it's a fact. The birth of Jesus changed the time period in the world history, man. Another, another event. The death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Boom. That was like a major world event. No matter what you want to believe, if you're an atheist or what, no matter what. That, that, it's a fact. It happened. Okay, so Mark starts his gospel out 
It, it's like the year 70 AD, approximately. So the Apostle Paul written to the Thessalonians around uh, 50 AD, and Christ was crucified in nearly uh, 30, 33 AD, scholars believe. So there's a significant amount of time from Christ's crucifixion to the very first gospel. It starts out uh, uh, in the prophets. He says, in the prophets you've heard, you know, uh, of one calling in the wilderness to make straight way for the Lord, right? And he's talking about John the Baptist. And then he goes on to, to talk about John the Baptist fulfilling that, that scripture. He, he was baptizing everyone for the remission of sins in the Jordan River. And many people from all over Judea and all over Israel were coming to him. So Jesus enters the scene, he steps on the scene, and, and he gets baptized from, he, he leaves Galilee and he goes down to Judea. That's like from Northern California to Southern California now. And then he gets baptized. And then immediately the Spirit of God drives him out to the wilderness to be tested. And then from there he, he, he goes into Galilee, and John gets locked up, and he goes back into Galilee, he makes a trip back to Galilee, and he enters in Capernaum and all that. He, he goes into Galilee and he calls his disciples. But before he calls his disciples, he says, The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The time is fulfilled. So what is he talking about, man? What? He is the kingdom of God. He's the sacrifice. He's the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Everybody is waiting for him to come and establish a new kingdom. But he, he, he came the first time as the Lamb of God. He's coming again the second time as the general, as the military leader. That's another event in world history that us Christians, that us believers are waiting for, right? We're waiting for the second coming of Christ, if it's in our lifetime. But, like I said, this gospel, this kingdom of God is at hand. So he's, he's preaching repentance, man. True repentance brings re revision. It brings modification. It brings transformation. Forgiveness brings refreshment. It brings peace. It brings healing. See, there's nothing wrong with emotions or feelings, if you want to call it that nowadays. See, God gave those to us as characteristics to mankind, right? But it's what we do, it's our decisions that we make in our feelings, in our emotions. Sometimes it's deadly, believe me, I know. I've had suicidal thoughts, I've, I've contemplated suicide, I've come, tried to commit suicide twice. And, and that's a terrible, see, we make a life-ending decision based off an emotion, based off a feeling. Believe in the gospel. It's more like a, a, a lifestyle, a culture change, man. When you put your trust and, and obey in Jesus Christ, and you become a new creature, right? You become a new person. The old things you used to do, you don't like to do them no more. You you become brand new, man. You're alive in Christ. Once dead, now alive in Christ. Believe in the gospel, the good news, man. The good news of Jesus Christ, the teaching, the messages. You know what I mean? Like, it's a whole lifestyle, man. Doing things that you wouldn't do before. You know what I mean? Watching your mouth. We must guard our heart. We must guard our mind. Hold every thought captive to obedience of Christ. You know what I mean? Like, like it's real easy to, to wake up in the morning and think a bad thought. As soon as you think a bad thought, hold it captive to the obedience of Christ. Is that what Christ would think? Is that, you know what I mean? Is that going to bring life or is that going to bring destruction? You know? See, I was talking to one of the brothers, man, and he, he came from that that secular world of psychology. He has many degrees and spent many years, you know, always learning and learning, but never coming to the knowledge of God. 
and he's transitioning into biblical counseling, right? Because he said that world of psychology, man, like you never, it never fills you. You're never satisfied. You're always paying a, a man or someone to 200 bucks an hour. You're always taking a step. You know, what I mean, there's nothing wrong with the the, the 12 steps. There's nothing wrong with going to see psychology, but it's not gonna fill you. You know what I mean? You need something. See the Bible. If we all just take our time and, and, and study it and read it to be filled and do our own homework, like not just listen to what people have to say. Don't listen to me, man. Read it for yourself. I encourage you to read it for yourself. See, every problem we go through in life, there's a solution. The Bible is full of instructions, full of wisdom, full of knowledge. It's full of truth. It is the truth. I hold strong to the word of God. I hold strong. It is the truth in my life. I believe in the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed for it is the power of God. Let us pray. Dear Yahweh, O oh Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the breath of life. The prayer of my heart is that your people would fear you. They would hate sin. They would shun evil. We need a fresh outpouring of your Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God to fall fresh from heaven on the hearts of men so they can go home and lead their families. They can change their neighborhoods, transform their cities, and this great nation will repent 